You think that did hold that for a while. <laughs> but it always works that way. That's just the way it does. And so, you know, they, 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 then there's the, the, the uh, mandatory bat toss, you know, they toss the bat. And the other kid either drops it or he catches it, and wherever he catches it, then we start this thing going up and this to see who gets the juice first. Don't tell me you don't remember this. <laughs> Give you old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do remember it. Do I remember on that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I got support on that. But then we started, and then they would pick and choose, and then they'd start down there, and the first person to get picked was always the best one. You know, if you got first pick, that made you got the best player next to yourself. <laughs> the real, the second best player was the guy who was going to pick against you on the other table. But you got the third best player, it seemed like, and then it would go back and forth until all the players were there. And then there was always somebody who was <laughs> dead last. Imagine how now looking back with all this wisdom that we've been imparted upon us, had imparted on us, what do you think they felt like? Because every day it was the same person who was dead last. And then I thought of this this morning as I was walking the bridge and I thought I was crossing over grapevine trying to drown out the noise of the cars and everything else and I thought, that must be a terrible feeling to not be chosen. Thank God I'm chosen. You feel the same way? Yeah. Yeah. That somehow, in the big grand scheme of things, in God, in his infinite wisdom, and we don't even know what that's even like, but in his infinite wisdom, he has said, I choose you. I choose you. Now, after a while, you know, in the baseball field, you know, we got smarter about doing it pretty soon as we grew up. It dawned on us. You know, it might be beneficial to choose a girl. <laughs> Once you start wanting to hold hands, you don't hold hands with the you know, you know how that goes. So anyway, it kind of changes the rules as we get older. But I want you to keep that idea in the back of your head about what it means to not be chosen and how that would feel on the outside as we celebrate All Saints Day today. Because it's important in that context. I'm going to review a little bit from last week. We talked about the text from, you know, is read every Pentecost, you know, at Pentecost, it's from Joel. He said that day will come when I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone will receive the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will do what the Holy Spirit does. Working within people to convict them, to teach them, to admonish them, to encourage them, to comfort them. All the things that the Holy Spirit does, which is necessary for us. And then we read the text from Timothy, from, from 2 Timothy. Paul and Timothy having this intimate conversation. And Paul tells him to, Paul tells him among other things that he's fought the good fight, he's run the good race, he's finished the race. But more than anything else, what's he done? He's kept the faith. Thank you. He has kept the faith. The faith that was handed down to him that he received on the road. And then he talks about Timothy, but he reminds Timothy the faith that you got from your mother. And that she got from her mother. And we start seeing this succession about how faith is, is uh, not given because faith is a gift, but how faith is received and nurtured and how it's made important to us. And the people that come into our lives that were that come before us as God is constantly creating and recreating us. By the way, that's how you know what God's not done with you. When you meet a stranger, God's still working on you. God bringing people into your life that you might influence them and they might influence you. But the idea is that we're constantly being made new and, and we're constantly constantly being shaped and we're constantly being brought deeper into their faith by those people around us. And what's so important about this on, on All Saints Sunday is because we have this opportunity right now during this day. This is not a day that you typically celebrate. Right next door in the Lutheran church, I happen to know this because I've got spies over there. <laughs> it's, not true. it's not true. I happen to know this because 
just spoke with Patterson. <laughs> I just I said that to see if you paid attention, but you won't have to touch the thing. But they celebrate, they're making stars from the from the rafters, people's names on it. And they celebrate all, all, all saints in a different way, you know, that they have they have people that they remember that died this year. And those are the stars that are, that are uh, hanging from the rafters. And then they have other people that they, that they remember as well, that uh, are listed in different ways, that have special meaning to them. I know that when we talk about the saints, if I say, you know, that we're going we're gonna to remember the saints today, you know, that some might think that that's, well, that's in the Catholic tradition. You know, we have lots of different saints. We have St. Paul, St. Peter. We have St. Matthew. And we have a few other saints, St. Christopher, and there's a lot of women saints, St. Teresa, St. Agnes, St. Agatha, a whole bunch of them. And they're venerated, and they've done something special in the church, and we remember them for certain reasons, for the way that they've, what they've done, and for the way that they have purposed their lives, and for the way that God has been able to use them to accomplish great and mighty things in the world. But for us, we don't, we, we don't, in our tradition, we don't particularly venerate those saints. Those saints have had to pass through certain tests for their tradition to become, to be elevated to saints. But the saints we don't remember today, for us in our tradition, are the ones that have had special meaning to us. The ones that, that like Timothy, that have shaped you, who have called you to, to, to and to shaped your, your faith and, and nurtured you in your faith and read to you the Bible stories and took you to church. And if you couldn't do that right now, that's the ones that watch your kids and the ones that, 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 that uh, help you with your parents that you can't take care of. And the saints are those that are always active in the world that are doing the things that, that sometimes we say we just can't do anymore. And they're the ones that pick us up, sustain us. I read, I was on the Methodist website this week, and I probably won't be able to remember all of them. But there was things that, that they said that, that uh, in remembering the saints in their lives, one of the greatest things that I remember read that I read this way is that if my if I lived my life the way that they did, I would be a great man. To think so much and so highly of the way that you like to shape that person that you say I want to be like them, but then. That we're all supposed to be somewhat Christ-like. Again, the saints of the faith are those that mentor you. The saints of the faith are the ones that, that read to you the Bible stories to you. The saints of the faith are the ones that when you didn't want it, gave it to you anyway. Now, the saints of the faith are the ones that we remember that, that as they sit here amongst us, that it was just special the fact that they're here. Did you enjoy where you were at more simply by the fact that they were sitting in the you? They said something. They encouraged you. They challenged you. They taught you. Those are the people that we're talking about today. And you're part of them. Because somebody, one of these children that's on the front row this morning, somebody is going to remember you in a particular way. And wouldn't it be special if they remembered you? They were the ones that taught me the faith, that shaped my faith, that caused me to want to come back to church, that caused me to want to know Christ on a different level. And this is why we celebrate all these things today. And you're wondering what the little pieces of paper are that's on the machines that are in front of you and they're on the seat. You see a little square piece of paper about this big? That's for in there. You go, hold that one up. There you go. You got one? Everybody got one? Part of what we do, part of my tradition, part of the, of, uh, the things that, that I have done in the different churches that I've been to is we honor those people that have gone forward in a certain way. We break them. And that's what this candle is. This is the candle for all the saints that have gone before. And I would ask you to write the names of that person. If it comes to mind, somebody that was in the church, somebody who's no longer with us, somebody that's passed on. But somebody, somebody, we would say, oh, that person was the same. That person was special to me. My life is better right now simply because I knew them. God worked 
drew them a wondrous way. Now, my last usher is kind of a play those. And they'll take them up, and we're going to just bring them forward as, as, uh, as we continue this message. And at the end of the sermon, we're going to say a prayer for those people. The other aspect of the, of the, the there's a couple of other things in, in the message that was read today, and it was the idea of election, this idea of chosenness, this, this introduction to the topic. And like I said, I don't want to get into this because I feel a lot of discussion on that. But the one thing that I do know, that as we're gathered together as a group, one of the things that we said in our profession of faith is that we believe in the communion of saints. We believe in the communion of saints. And later on, we're going to read from the book here on our communion liturgy that says that we're going to praise God's name and all with, along with all the company of heaven. So if we believe in the communion of saints, if we believe that there's something greater than that, that, that they are still with us, that their presence still speaks to us, that although he's not sitting right here with us, I can just hear his voice saying, he wouldn't go for that. He wouldn't like it the way that we're doing things today. But see, that person is still speaking to you. And that's a good thing. Or he might be saying, we need to forgive. We need to be at peace. Maybe that person to you is a peace man. Just imagine all the possibilities of what that is. And as we gather at the table today, and we say what we say, that we're going to praise God with the entire company of heaven, because we believe in the communion of saints. And that's a different, that same root word is community, because we still see them people, all whoever they are, as being part of who we are. We're still in community. This, this, this building, handle, it's bigger than that. In the book of Daniel, we talked about this week in our election class that Daniel sees the saints and, and the, the one, the righteous one seated on the throne. And before him are the, the elders that come. The saints, and they're all singing praises to him. And there's 10,000 times 10,000. Put four zeros after 10,000. Imagine what that chorus sounds like. Probably almost as good. But well, I thank you for these names. I thank you for the, the, the lives that have come to the And the altars of any place for them. Because we give this service to them. of heaven and they bring their presence here as we commune with you this morning through the bread and through the wine let me hear them again let me hear them again and what they had to say to me now that if they would be here this morning with me what would they say and hopefully it will be something along the lines of well done well done so God we give you thanks for these people and we ask your blessing to continue to be upon them and us as we go through the rest of our lives and become one who is remembered in just such a way. And we ask what we ask. As we go through our prayer time this morning, there are a couple of names that probably should be had in the Martin is in Mesa View or was in Mesa View yesterday. 